Name and call sign, otherwise we're going to be here all night. <laughs> That's okay. Paul, WB5 and Bruce Brown, I'll be taking the test on the 29th, so I'll come back to you with the sign. Okay. We'll hold you to that. Robbie, W5RML. All right, K5, CFY. John. NJ5 Zulu, corporate pilot. Gary, KF5XK. Uh, David, N5DMK. Bart, N5TWB. Greg, WF5GGW. Jeff, aerospace engineer, 5 mechanical engineer. <laughs> Richie, W5OKL. Matthew, NR0Q. Maxwell, WM4TH. Willie, KI5HJN. Andrew, W5AWS, James, KI5TAZ, Chad, N5LPR, Bob, W5RAB, David, KI5BBB, Jack, W5JHC, Dan, K5CAY. Cool. Well, welcome, everybody. You go by Max or Maxwell? I'll be studying with them. Either one? I have something for you. Don't leave until I give it to you. And Chad, I've got your shirts. Okay. Good, 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 good. Uh, okay. November meeting minutes. If you get the newsletter, you get the minutes. Anybody have any questions about the minutes? It's November because we did the December Christmas party. So there's no, meet it, there's no minutes from the Christmas party. Uh, any discussion about the November minutes? Going once, going twice, okay. Move they be amended or approved this minute, second. <laughs> Who was at the second? Second. You did? Okay. You get that in here? And uh, Russ, so he's got father. Oh, Russ, okay. Russ, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Okay. Uh, the November financials, and Jerry's not here, so we can't talk about those. No, but you should see, should see the radio on my ham shack. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion about the financials? Okay. I move we approve them as published. Yes. That was W5GGW. Seconded. And N5TWB with the second. And all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That's what I like. Okay. Next thing on the agenda. Uh, since this is the first meeting of 2022. And we had a, good, a lot of good things in 2021. You would agree? I mean, a lot of people in here had a lot, a lot of good stuff to do. And uh, so I want to make sure that that is recognized and rewarded. So uh, our former first vice president, K5AEB, is not here tonight. So I'll hold off on that one. Russ, you want to come up here, please? <laughs> So, a little certificate for, uh, how long were you a secretary? I don't know. <laughs> a long time. A long time. So, yeah, he made good notes, yeah. 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 So, thank you much. So, thank you. Thank you, Yep. And our resident repeater expert, Mr. Buford, Bob Buford, W5RAB. Like I said before, if you've got anything, any complaints about the repeater system, he's the guy and he does a great, great job. So thank you, Bob, thank you. for all that you do. And our 
let's see, we wouldn't have as much fun and we wouldn't be doing all the things that we do without a public service liaison. So, Bart, your turn. He handles all of our public service stuff, bike rides, races, uh, Christmas party, not Christmas, Christmas party too, yes. and uh, Christmas parade. What else? What else do you do? Ice cream, ice cream social. Ice cream. Yeah. Part, right, Robbie? Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for what you do. And our Aries Tulsa coordinator, emergency coordinator. <laughs> Paul was, of course, he's instrumental with anything Aries, but there were some things, Boy Scout things, and some other stuff that you did that, um, you know, needs to be recognized for. And Jack, our new first vice president, if anybody has looked at the website, W5IAS, it's, awesome. it's all him. It's all him. Very good. Thank you. So he definitely deserves the recognition for that, as well as uh, uh, Paul did some Boy Scout stuff with Jack back in the fall, and that's one of the things that we're going to try and start doing again. Uh, apparently, we used to support the Boy Scouts quite a bit. For anybody that was here, a longtime member, we did. So we're starting to get back into that again. And last but not least, if you've been through the trailer, uh, that's all Steve, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, that was all Steve because uh, that was during 2020. We had bought the trailer in 2019, I think, and um, he spent most of 2020 when everything was locked down building the trailer. COVID project. COVID project, <laughs> yep. So thank you, Steve. All right, Remmel, your turn. Well, I want to talk to you about Ham Rescue, and this was a uh, group that was started by Johnny in 5XQK. And uh, so it kind of, uh, after his passing, it kind of, you know, fell into, uh, you know, nobody uh, taking doing anything with it. So we have revived it, and we've had a lot of help doing this over the year, and I'm going to pass out some certificates as well. These represent fellows that have gotten up early. It might have been cold, hot. They went out, they helped somebody with their antenna, their station. And so we want to recognize them because they don't only maintain their own equipment, their own antennas, and, and their own station. But they also come out, and even if it's just to hold the other end of the rope, whatever. You know, we don't got to be cowards, all kinds of and I don't have all the names of the people that have helped John. But if I get those, they'll be the So uh, these are not in any particular order. But this is a certificate. It says uh, Northeast Oklahoma University Group. Okay? And uh, this certificate is presented to to say thank you and acknowledge your kind and enthusiastic support of the Northeast Oklahoma Ham Rescue which was founded by N5XQK, Johnny Rainbow, Silent P. I've added a note down here. Uh, the valuable assistance you provided allowed another ham radio operator to continue station operations, and that's what it's all about. We're keeping people on here so that we can talk to them. So, uh, Mark? Mark definitely came out and saved the day one morning in particular. Mr. Ray, hit my CFY. Thank you. Thank you. Jack. Pass it all back. Just pass that to Jack. And he's not here. Bobby, W5RAB. Yes, sir. 
By the way, I brought these. Uh, these QSTs were provided by Steve, Alpha Alpha Phi Victor, and uh, so help yourself. So we had a lot of guys that helped out. Justin is in here, K5JRX, Jerris, AI5Q, JD, KI5JHQ, uh, another Justin, AF5LW, Mitch, KC5PWP, John in Wagner County, and 5 uua Alan in uh, Owasso, I think. Mm -hmm. Sperry. Sperry, like KI5DAY, uh, JP, KI5LRA, Let's see here. And Jerris' brother, Ian, KI5 KQB. So anyway, a very big thank you. We didn't know that we could even do this, uh, get this group going again, but we've done it. Uh, we worked across club lines. So if you hear a ham anywhere, if they won't get in touch with ham rescue, we have six key players, key members to contact any one of them including myself, Mark, Ray, Jack, can come out and do a survey, see if it's something we can do, and if it is, we'll take it on. Uh, any one of the six can take over ham rescue. That's why we've got six of us doing this. So that's all I have. Uh, the other thing is, let's thank these guys. And as we said in the Navy, Bravo Zulu. <laughs> Much. We have uh, Mike, KI5 EGH in Creek County. Uh, we have John, N5 UUA in Wagner. Uh, we have several people in Tulsa. Uh, Bob lives in uh, Bartlesville. Uh, we've just got them scattered all over the place. And plus, we have a Facebook uh, page. You can go there and send us a note that way, and we'll uh, get in touch with you. Uh, it might not be me, it might be Ray or uh, Jack or somebody else, but, you know, uh, we're here to help. And uh, that's the whole intent, you know, uh, is to keep guys on the air so we can talk to them and yeah. help them out in the process. And they, there's a kind of an organization that, uh, I make a good blip it, I can sit down on something. <laughs> we could use you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, one job that Mark uh, helped us with, uh, it was a 45 foot uh, uh, Titan. It was a Titan, Titan. Yeah, it was DX. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's uh, vertical, okay, and, and it has a uh, fiberglass splitter in the middle of it, so the thing wants to go like this. Oh, wow. It's top heavy, but we didn't have enough people until Mark showed up, so good on you. Anyway. Thank you. You always have somebody that's going to call 911, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> somebody standing there with an Yeah. 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 Did you then? Did you say Blivet? Blivet. Blivet. Is that a ham radio jargon too? Yeah. Uh, I've never heard that before. <laughs> it's a bag full of sand. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, oh, okay. Bob up in the back. Uh, for those of you that check in on the nets Tuesday night, this is our one minute technical portion here. Um, there was uh, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about power poles and what to do to, um, I don't want to say grease them, but to keep the corrosion down. And somebody had written this article and, and it said use white lithium grease, which I know is high temperature and, well, then somebody else did some research on it and they posted that that was not the right thing to do um, because it acts more as an insulator than a conductor. Yep. So there was uh, something, I uh, forget what it was. I've got the, uh, if anybody wants to read it, I've got the whole thing here. There's something from, 
uh, MG Chemicals, mm -hmm. and it's a grease that is has a 25 percent carbon. Con I'm sorry, 21 percent carbon content, as opposed to lithium grease, which is less than one percent. Yeah. It's one of those wives' tales that we all get started on. Well, I mean, you get, yeah. you get the whole problem with as soon as there's some moisture, you're going to have electrolysis. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's going to create a transfer of ions and, and energy carrying matter mm -hmm. that's going to, you know, impact the, the state of your connector. And yeah. for audio, you need to unplug and plug audio in all the time because that capacitance. Will, you know, build up of corrosion happens quite readily because of right. and electricity is the same way. You'll get warmer and warmer connectors in the power pole. In yeah. particular, that plastic melts, and so if you get enough resistance in there, you risk short. Yeah. I started reading up on that too. The power poles, uh, some of them are silver, and some of them have a, a uh, something on top of it that uh, keeps it from uh, being uh, good. And yeah. For a longer time, and one of them wears out more. You know. Yeah. Well, they yeah that and and that was the other part of this. They said that if you if you're doing a a permanent installation, yeah. don't use power poles. If you're doing a temporary installation, like you're you're taking your radio into your car once a month while you're going on vacation or something, and you're plugging those power poles in and then unplugging them and plugging them back in and unplugging them, that motion of is enough to swipe off the corrosion. Right. So. Power poles are self-lighting. Yes. And Anderson has the trademark for power poles. And they're good. Uh, they have a thin coating, actually, is what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At all. The cheap ones have a very, very thin thin coating. And the opposite is probably one of the best products you can get to put on those. It's so will the opposite. So would that be the the power uh, power that uh, work that are the best to have the coating on it? Because some of well, them are Chinese. Some use power poles. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean there's some other people making the same thing, I think. The little We're working on the weather net, 
So any of you that have checked into the to the uh, Tuesday night net, if we you know if we'll do a radio check with you, we'll help you get your get your volume up, get your you know test your radio, uh, get ready for storm season, and uh, we're going to be doing our own. Well, I don't give away too much yet, but it is a it will there will be an upgraded weather net. And so if you're any kind of skywarn person or you just like standing out in the backyard watching the tornado sirens are going off and you're looking for it and you've got the radio in your hand, we could use Make sure you turn around and look behind you every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look out for wind. Watch out for the flying cows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It may be balls. Anybody have any questions or anything? Concerns? Green Country Ham Fest, April 8th and 9th is on. You can get your tickets, uh, go to greencountryhamfest.org, and uh, it's up and working. You can get tables and get your uh, entry uh, in. And I believe we're going to have the trailer out there. Yeah. And the tower trailer will be out there. Right. Who owns that tower trailer? Is it the VA Club or is it Bat It's a bad fish. It's a bad fish club. When do we get another trailer tower? Don't we need a uh, standby? Well, <laughs> coincidentally, we have one. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's in rough shape, probably hasn't been driven in 10 years. <laughs> it needs a little bit of um, no wheels. <laughs> yes. Hey, if you all are uh, bored on Monday nights at 10 p.m., come over to 3916 Pillars and check in with me on the uh, Three wheelers now. Yep. Like to hear a bunch of Tulsa stations come in there. Um, I have this printed out. We're talking about the uh, the not scholarships, the um, the grant money. I printed that out off the AWRL letter. And I don't know if everybody, if everybody gets that, but if you want to read about it, uh, find out what it's all about. You can have this. And. Uh, um, Tuesday night net, next Tuesday. Jack will be doing net control. Yay. And we'll be logging. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. All right, anything else? Going once, going twice. There's a couple people I need to talk to before we go. Bob, did you have something? I'm just going to remind you that you're going to be able to get your tickets online. You can get them online at www.greencountryhamfest.org. Well, that's what